Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and today we're talking about some changes you can make right now to your war bases to instantly improve them. These are going to be things that will be very helpful for kind of beginners and intermediate war base builders trying to build good anti three star bases at the upper town hall levels, as well as it might include some things that even uh, seasoned veterans in base building might not know. So we're going to kind of be going through giving you guys some tips. A quick note, if you want your own custom war base each month, check out my Patreon. You can get a perk such as that, as well as other perks, Discord access, get advice on all your attacks. Check out my Patreon link in the description um, to get those custom war bases as well as those other perks if you're interested. But those existing bases you have sitting in your base slots, how can you make them better right now as soon as you leave this video and only spend like a few minutes doing it? First thing, this is something that most base builders will know, but it's important to point out for people that don't have as much experience. It is the kind of the hierarchy of hit points for these outer buildings. They're called trash buildings because they're non-defensive buildings. Don't have much of a purpose besides just being there. Uh, you want to very particularly um, and intentionally put them on the outside of your base. So what do I mean by that? Well, you want to have the higher hit points, assuming you have two layers, which oftentimes at certain parts of your base, you'll have two layers of buildings on the outside of your walls. Um, if we imagine this is like a little base here, right here, you want to have the inner layer, your higher HP buildings, the outer layer, lower HP. What's the reason for that? Well, first of all, the bowler bounce is the important part. People will often try to create funnels to funnel troops into your base by taking out trash buildings. You don't want them to have be able to bowler bounce to take out two buildings because these buildings are otherwise very well protected by your defenses typically. But if a bowler can sit back here and bounce two buildings, it can get good value for only six troop space and create a funnel. Also, the mortars, if you put it on the outside of the base, um, this is the bad example up here. Let's go to that. It can be bowler bounce. So you a bowler dropped here bounces off there, takes out the mortar. They get a free mortar for only six troop space as well as some other of uh, these trash buildings. So don't put the high HP then the low HP. It'll allow them to create a cheap and easy funnel if they want to make a funnel there. Um, it's an easy fix. Also, the same HP is true um, because it'll take the same number of shots to take out uh, both those buildings, whereas if you do it here, the bowler takes this out. This is only at like half hit points. It moves on to something else. So this is still there to mess up pathing uh, for the troops in the funnel. Um, anyway, pretty basic there. Move on to the next one, which is something you guys might not think about as much, even seasoned base builders. Um, your Grand Warden, you know, you kind of put him... He's like an archer tower, right? He can target air and ground. A little slower in shooting, but does quite a bit of damage. Where do you put him? Um, here's something to think about. He does have a buff for heroes and troops defensively as well. And you'll notice that as you place him in during an attack, you see that aura, which isn't his radius of attack. That's actually a little bigger. That's the radius in which he gives a buff to troops and heroes that are nearby defensively so if you have archer towers over your base then you have your warden in some random place maybe switch the warden out for an archer tower that happens to be near uh either your king or your queen uh defensively it's you know similar dps uh also targets air and ground similar defense to an archer tower but putting it near a hero gives that hero a little extra I, I believe at least hit points if not also dps so that is something that I would definitely recommend. It's an easy change to make. Um, this next one, guys, if you're still putting your Seeking Air Mines next to your air defenses, uh, go back to, I don't know, 2017. Um, but the point is, nowadays, it's not good to do that, especially at Town Hall 10. People are using bat spells to take out your air defenses. Dragons won't be going there, uh, likelihood is. Put them towards the outside of your base. Take out healers on queen walks. Um, a side that's susceptible to the stone slammer, to dragons. You almost want to put these away from your good air defensive stuff. Not You don't worry about popping lava hounds. Worry about taking out stone slammer, healers, dragons. And that's a lot of that's based on testing. But 
uh, you can have a good hunch of where people are going to drop that. So move your air defense or move your seeking air mines there. On um, this next one, I made a video on this a while back, but I want to give it another brief um, shout out here because it's a very useful thing. This is, and there's not a spring trap shown, but uh, if you're putting spring traps between defenses, as you should, I hope you are doing, um, sometimes it's best to have these little walls that would force hogs, instead of being able up here to kind of cross in any of these paths, um, you force them through here. Because the weird thing about hog AI is that if they have the choice between jumping this wall or just going normally like this, they're going to take that easier route. Hogs are kind of lazy. They don't like to jump, believe it or not. So unless it's an obvious wall and they have to cross it like that, um, if they're coming along in this direction, they're all going to kind of get funneled through that one tile gap. So having these little walls, if you have a few extra walls to guide them into a spring trap, ensures you get three hogs instead of one or two hogs. It's actually very effective. You can check out my spring trap video. Just search that up if you want more details. Um, but, and you might think, okay, well, that's kind of telling the attacker where my spring traps are. They kind of know where they are anyway. You can do it for maybe two or three spring traps. doesn't have to be all of them. But the attacker already has a pretty good idea. They're going to be on the town hall side um, to prevent the wall wrecker push from taking too many out. So just do it for one or two and you'll be more successful killing hogs. It's a good thing to do. Um, moving on, we have two more. This next one is is relatively easy change to make as well. Let's say you have the core of your base looks something like that, maybe the CC, air sweepers, defenses, whatever. Then oftentimes a kill squad goes in here, you have like bowlers and stuff in there. You don't want them to get good bowler bounces because from, from inside the core of your base, bowlers can target um, whatever's in these adjacent compartments, but the bounces also go off to the compartment next to them. And when bases really get crushed is when defenses in what would be these compartments all the way like one, one uh, compartment removed from where the core is um, the bounces take out everything next to the core as well as like those next outer compartments you want to avoid that which is why I would recommend um, putting instead of having like huge storages here put in like a builder hut. Now it's good to have storages in your base to defend against miners, dragons, make them have to take forever to get through your base so defenses have time to target them. But at the same time, if they're in certain locations, you're giving a bowler bounce from here onto defenses that could be over in this area. So avoid doing that. Use your high HP building strategically, but don't necessarily put them next to a core because especially with wall wreckers these days, people are gonna get bowlers into the core of your base and they're going to be uh, doing some pretty significant damage on their second bounce as if there's a bunch of high HP buildings for them to bounce off of. Here they take out the builder head at a weird angle then move on. Also dead space idea to think about. And if you're able to make this change, having a two tile gap makes it so bowlers can't even reach whatever's over there. So uh, keep in mind um, the bowler push and how from the core uh, you don't want bowlers to get all these second bounces onto random defenses all over the place can really compromise a base. This last one might be my favorite. Um, so you have your base somewhere. Oftentimes you'll have an air defense kind of towards the outside, maybe next to one of your outer walls. Sometimes it's a good idea to shift your entire base because typically you don't take up the entire space in the base layout. Shift the base so that this air defense uh, is as close as it can be while still having uh, one layer of trash on the outside, so that's what four tiles wall plus that three tile elixir collector away from the outer edge. And the reason you do that is people often start queen walks here. Um, the idea is that uh, be if your air defense is farther back, you can shoot down the healers. But if you have like an air defense out here, the queen takes it out. As she continues walking, there's no air defense to shoot down her healers. So if you put the air defense like that, there's nowhere a queen walk can be started here because the air defense range is like that. You can't physically drop the healers anywhere back here out of range of the air defense. So this basically prevents people from starting a queen walk or any healer type attack there because there's physically no place to put the healers. So if you have a side susceptible to a queen walk starting there or to any healers being put there in general, you can move that air defense, just you know, use the move all function on your base, make sure there's no trash 
uh, that's going to prevent that. No like troll Teslas, town hall in the corner that will prevent you from doing that. And uh, that would be a great way to kind of prevent people from starting something in that area of your base, such as a queen charge. Okay, having said all that, these are now that you've watched the video, you can go to your war bases right now and make those changes. Uh, they're very quick changes to make, not going to have to rebuild an entire base. And I think they could benefit you greatly and oftentimes save you from being triples. They apply to pretty much any town hall level. Uh, once you get, you know, town hall nine and beyond, really, uh, you, you should be able to make these changes. So I hope this helped. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, one more time, I guess, to summarize real quick, uh, higher HP trash inside, lower HP outside. Uh, substitute the Warden and Archer Towers uh, to give your defensive heroes a buff by having the Warden nearby. Move the Seeking Air Mines not by air defenses, but other locations, taking out Dragons, Healers, Stone Slammer. Use the walls to guide Hogs into your uh, Spring Traps. Be wary of your core and bowlers getting good second bounces, so avoid putting these uh, random storages next to your core that can get bowler bounces. Uh, have dead space, builder hut, less HP right next to your core. And then finally, you can slide these air defenses that are already on the outer layer of your base so that they're touching almost the outside and a, a queen charge can't be started there. All right, thanks for watching. The Patreon link is in the description if you want your custom war base every month. Uh, check that out if you're interested, and I'll see you guys later. Bisect the Tron out.